Hey guys, Sprint Central Arkansas. This is not complicated. Let me show you how I build my hydroponic Dutch buckets. Okay, here is pretty much everything you need to make what I just showed you in that nice illustration. I need to connect the two of the 2x4s together to create the platform that the gutter will sit in. Okay, here's two ends for each one. And in between each end, each long piece, there will be three supports. So there's six supports here. Alright, using these screws, I put it together. You see the end have the longer pieces here. I put two on the ends just to keep it from twisting this way. And only one on the middle supports. We'll put a cap on one end. We slid it in the gutter. And we need to put the cap on the other end. But before we do that, we need to modify it. And this is what we're going to modify it with. This is a threaded to slip half inch and a half inch male to slip with a hose washer. Now when you do this, neoprene or nylon, whichever it is, I can't remember, um, is better than the rubber washers. Okay, you can see the camp, cap is clamped down. We don't want it moving while we're trying to drill. I've got a half inch bit on the DeWalt. I'm going to drill a hole in here and the trick to this is you want the hole to be as close to the top as possible. That way the water level will come all the way up to here before it starts draining out. So I went ahead and drilled both for both platforms. Take your time when you drill these, okay? Because um, if you get in a hurry, you can break this little point here. I think I've only done it like one time, but these end caps are like two to $3 a piece. And they do seal around the gutter. They're pretty good about it. But if you put it on and it starts leaking at any point, you do a dry run, you know, you fill it with water. If it starts leaking, you can add some silicone to it. I've even put some screws up high that go between this and the gutter itself. Lock it in place and then silicone over the screw so it can't pop off. Uh, but I wouldn't do it unless, uh, unless you have some leaking. Now you notice that half inch did not completely... Um, make the hole big enough for this will go through easily enough. So what you've got to do is you've got to use a box cutter, razor blade knife, whatever you're going to call it, and you got to kind of go around the edge and clean it on both sides until it gets just wide enough to slip through there. Even if you have to screw it in some, that's quite fine. You can put this washer either on the outside behind the th before you put the threads through or you can do like I do and put it on here after you poke it through here and the reason why I do it on the inside is because the water will help keep it pliable in my thoughts whereas I've had rubber ones on the outside that dry rot in the sun now when you put the washer on you want the inside part of the washer to be flush against this because once you start screwing it down you want a, a good seal there it is installed now you don't have to cinch this down super tight 
at all. I don't have many that leak. Uh, I hold this part with my hand and I take a wrench and I tighten the other part. And just when it feels a little bit snug, it's all you got to do. And then orient the, uh, the bend downwards. Okay, I'm filling it up. We're doing a dry run. You can see the water level is about right here now. <laughs> I'll probably speed this up <laughs> so you don't have to sit here through all this mess. I just wanted to come out and start dripping just to show you it in operation. There we go. And that is how full it is on this end. Now, How full it is on the other end is dependent on how level you keep this thing. Okay, it's been sitting here for uh, almost a whole day. And I don't see any water leaking, so it looks like the inset cap seals are good. I did a little test just to see how much fluid one of these 10 foot gutters holds, typically. I, never, I have never known after all these years. Anyway, it is just under four gallons as measured by my container. And if it was a little bit more level, I think it would hold right at four gallons. Leaving the house, this is my neighborhood. So here we are. Time to load up. And here we are loaded up. Okay, these are the buckets I'm using to make the hydroponic Dutch buckets. And these are the same as the buckets I used to use, which are here, except they changed the style. This is a food grade bucket, and it's not even really a bucket, it's a container, but we're gonna make it a bucket. And you can see here, it's got HDPE, uh, let me get my finger in there. Yeah, HDP2 food grade. And uh, that means it's uh, safe. Now for these modified Dutch buckets, you don't have to use the super sucralose container. You can use anything. You can use a, uh, a uh, five gallon bucket from any of the big box stores. You can use uh, any container you can absolutely think of, actually. Just make sure it's food grade, food safe. And there are the buckets complete. All cleaned up, labels removed, ready to go on the fawn platform. Now, next thing we need to do is put a net cup in the bottom of each one of the buckets. We're gonna use a three inch net cup with a three inch hole saw. Now you can see here that this gutter is not covered. So when the water is full, it's exposed to outside light and that could generate and also insects or anything really. And what tends to happen is this the nutrient will turn green, it'll start to develop a slime. Also, mosquitoes will get in there and they'll lay their eggs and you'll have mosquito larvae. Um, it's happened to me since the beginning, but I have a remedy for that. Here's the fix. These are four and a half inch wide by eight inch long pieces of foam board. So yeah, you put one at the beginning here, and then you put one in between each bucket, like so, and then you slide it in, you put another one on, you slide it on, and what that does is that keeps the light out. I also wanted to show you this. You can move the buckets. You cannot use buckets at all. You can put a piece of foam board cut four and a half inch by whatever length of the fawn you want. You can, it can be all 10 feet or it can be a couple feet like it is here. And then you can space and cut out the foam board. Put it in and grow directly into the gutters. This is a form of deep water culture. I call it shallow water culture. Uh, and I've grown like this many, many times. If you look at any of my videos, you'll see these, especially in the earlier ones.
I had a 55 gallon drum that I was going to use and it's just it's not it's too bulky it's way overkill for what we need for this greenhouse and um, and it just isn't a pretty looking thing so I picked this up at a big box store and uh, all I did was I drilled two holes one three-quarter inch and one three-quarter and I walled it out some okay the PVC watering system is really really easy this is a three-quarter inch PVC 10 foot section 10 foot piece it's got a cap on the end I did that on both sides then across connecting the two is another three-quarter inch piece with a support made out of PVC with a cap and a T on the end here is an elbow which allows it to go all the way across and it connects to a three-way here on this three-way is a stub coming down and it's got a garden hose attachment with a Y on it. Now I'm going to show you what that Y is for. What I've got here is two pieces of about four foot in length hose. One's a little bit longer because of the way that uh, the Y sits and it's a little longer path to get to the distribution tank. On each end I put two female hose adapters on and clamped them down. Now you see I put both ends of the hose on the Y. They're run through into the storage tank. Here's the pump I chose and it's 100 gallons per hour. Let's go put it in. Okay we have the pump attached to this hose which comes around to the left side of the Y right here. And I took this piece out because they're not glued down and you can see really close with it. There's a hole there. That's a number 57 drill bit hole. And that's the perfect size you want. Now if you need to take a bucket out and uh, work on it or move it or whatever you need to do. If there's a space that needs to be plugged temporarily for any reason. I'm putting one of my uh, watering plugs, PVC watering plugs on each pipe. And this is what a water plug is. Just simply a piece of greenhouse plastic folded in half clamped on with some thin wall three quarter inch PVC that I cut up two inches long and then snipped out so they snap over the pipe just like that. With a greenhouse plastic underneath it, it does not leak. Next we've got the pump, the air pump with the air hose attached and the backflow preventer on with an air stone. I'm not going to put this in because it's very self-explanatory. Just run it into the tank, it just keeps everything aerated. I also have a paint strainer. I'm not going to put it on the pump at the moment. If you're going to do this, decide if you want to put a paint strainer or not. I think it's a good idea to help keep debris out of the pump. I am filling the tank with plain house water. We're going to do a dry run. I love this part. I love testing things. <laughs> All right, we have it coming out on both sides there. Equal amounts. Now we can reduce that by adjusting the right Y there. Watch. Just a little bit. So you can adjust it. That's not a major pump. This little thing was like 10, 11 bucks. Anybody can get a little bigger pump and throw tons of water to it, but you don't need it. Now I use this type of dry nutrient. This is Master Blend. I get it from um, Morgan County Seeds in Missouri. And it's the 41838 it's tomatoes formula. I use it for all my growing. Now these are the mixing instructions for it. It says for 100 gallons you put in eight ounces of master blend, eight ounces of calcium nitrate, and five ounces of magnesium sulfate. Now I've simplified that per tablespoon if you want to mix it up in smaller batches. And obviously if you don't use master blend, use uh, liquid or any other, you just follow the directions. So operational run works great. Now we put a top on the container. It comes with it. Keep debris out and whatnot. 
can also put stuff on top of it if you need to. On the back side, you've got the drains. The drains from the gutter are half inch. I've got two pieces of half inch PVC there and there, and plus some fittings. Now, with a a drip system, a drip watering system, hydroponic drip system, you can either take the drains, connect them together side to side, and you can run it back into the tank where it's recirculating, and that's what it's called, recirculating. And that way you're using the nutrients over and over. Or, and if you do that, you have to bury it into the ground so this, the top, is as low as the drains. Or you can connect the two pieces together and run them outside or into any other type of container. You can lift it up a little bit and drain them into a container, or you can lift them up a good bit more and keep this on top of the ground and run it back into the container. The only problem is if you lift the, lift the platforms, that's less growing space. And that's it guys, you can't get any easier than that. This is an absolutely simple system. Here's three fawns right next to each other. Going for squash. This is an elevated fawn platform with buckets stacked for growing sweet potatoes and potatoes. Another three level fawn growing turnip greens, beans, it looks like uh, carrots leeks, 